All right, guys, I want to share with you probably one of the cooler watches that is a recent discovery for me, and this is a Casio watch, uh, the DW400, um, along with, you know, the 402 that I've already shown, the surfing timer, but the 400 also kind of goes hand in hand with them, with its, you know, case anyway. Um, similar modules and everything, two different functions, but they have similar operations and overall look if you if you see them side by side for sure. But uh, I already did the video on the surfing timer. Actually picked up another pair of uh, the surfing timer. You can see, uh, you know, these are older watches. They came out in the early 90s. Uh, I'm not sure how many years they made them, but uh, super cool watches. And when you do find them, you know, they're going to be in varying condition. They're resin cases and uh, some sort of... I don't know what kind of material the bezel is. It's not like a, a full good metal. It's some sort of casted metal or something. And then uh, the bezel inserts like this one, you can see, well, you know, you're going to have different kinds of scratches and different kinds of uh, fade, depending on what you find out there. But they're definitely out there. And if you're patient, you can find one for sure. I tossed my DW400 on a, actually, Zelos. Uh, Horween leather strap. Um, just had one laying around and it looks really good, I think. But you can do a bunch of different things. You can throw it on a Bond NATO. For example, this one here I just picked up and this is a Mora 20 millimeter Bond NATO. And I gotta say, it looks killer on there. Uh, you guys know I'm typically not a NATO fan, but I think this is a really good pairing. I could wear this, no problem. This watch, um, was part of, like I said, the package I picked up that other surfing timer, the 402 and this 400 that I picked up. And both of them are actually in really good shape. You can see this one has some scratches on the plastic, um, you know, crystal or whatever you want to call it, mineral crystal. So you could probably, some of these you can feel a little bit with your finger. You might be able to smooth that out a little bit with some poly. Um, I'm not sure about getting parts for this or not. But with some poly watch, you could probably soften that up a bit because it is right in the line of the uh, digital display. Uh, but still, overall, it's in really good uh, condition considering that it, these are getting pretty old. The buttons all work really good. Uh, I like to run these in the 24-hour clock. And, uh, you know, there is a movable bezel on this, so you can do some formulas with the tachymeter ring. And I'm still learning. I found a PDF, but the instructions on it aren't... I think they're clear, I'm just not understanding them, but essentially um, you get into this mode and you are setting up for your tachymeter measurements. So you can see up top here, you have the mile per hour thing and if you hit this button here, you can also switch into a different mode um, and back and, well, I think you can go back and forth, yeah. Um, and then you can go into here and you can put in different values all the way up to uh, nine, and then you scroll through in each uh, category. So, and then and then that plays in when you do the uh, stopwatch function. So, um, so, but I don't know how those values work. So, if you know, there's an alarm function, so you can set your alarm. And the beeper is actually pretty loud. And then, of course, you have your day date, and you know, so it's February sixteenth, Sunday, and then your time. But when you're in that, when you're in this mode here, so you, if you want to set it up, um, for example, if you just put one there, I don't know what that really means. Um, so, but when you go into the stopwatch function and you start it and you run it for a few seconds and then you stop it, it'll display 113.9 mile per hour. So, but I don't understand what those values are. I'll put a link to the PDF file I found in the description. Maybe someone that's a little more savvy with this type of uh, function could explain it to me possibly but so this one's my personal one this one i picked up as a pair and i already have this one sold to a patreon uh this this one here on the moral strap and then of course the surfing timer is actually already spoken for too so i have my two um, and i think they're great watches if you're looking for some fun colorful digital vintage i guess cast heel watches it's funky to say that because I grew up in the you know 90s and stuff but 41 millimeter case lug to lug is a 47.4 these screws are just 
they're faux screws. They have nothing to do with the spring bar. Um, so 47.4 lug to lug, only 10 and three quarter mil thick, 20 millimeter lug width. And it's like I said, it's all resin. And a lot of times you have to watch these holes will get chewed up and stuff uh, from people changing out straps. So if you're going to do a lot of strap changes, try to find straps with these quick releases. I think that'll help you. Well, just about with any watch, it makes it quicker. Um, I like them. At first, I was a little resistant to those quick change straps, but now that I've, uh, you know, worn them and, and you know, chain straps and stuff like that, they're pretty dang handy. And then, um, of course, like I said, you can obviously do a NATO. Because these are so thin, you're really not adding that much thickness anyway, so it wears really good on wrist. So definitely one to look out for, guys, if you are looking for a fun... Uh, Casio watch definitely check out these DW 400s 402s there's a bunch of different ones out there uh, take a moment maybe uh, start fiddling around online and try to track some stuff down that's outside your norm and uh, you might have some fun doing it so it's always fun trying to find ones that's in better condition or maybe parts so you could um, maybe in a future restore or something if you wanted to restore one or something i'm not going to get into restoring them i think i have my two i just scored a pretty good deal on um the pair of this this one here and this one so i swooped them up and then i passed that deal on to my patreons um i i feel like i did okay i think i paid around 300 for mine i think um and i paid uh closer to 200 dollars each for these guys so Again, snapshot in time, you're looking at, you know, February 16th of 2020. So I think comfortably, at least for me, for these watches, somewhere between 200 and 300 range, I think you're okay. I think as long as the condition is good, um, you know, if you're talking new old stock, which is going to be crazy hard to find, um, then yeah, you're going to probably pay a premium over that. But Maybe that's worth it to you. I kind of like them um, with a little bit of, you know, character to them. I'm totally fine with it. I think they uh, clean up pretty good, and then you throw a good strap on it, you're good to go. So, all right, you guys, let me know what you think on these. Also, it's fun. I mean, I'm sure you noticed it from watching it, but you can see the bars, you know, the negative display. And when it removes, you know, it leaves that green behind, and then it also starts filling in that red up top as you scroll through the seconds. So it's just fun. It's just cool. I like them. So, all right, guys, thanks for watching, and I will catch you on the next vid.